hello i am back on instagram for an episode of stash chats if you remember the early early days of stash chats i always did them on instagram and have moved over to doing youtube live so today we're having some technical issues with the platform i usually use on um youtube live so that's why we're doing stash chats on instagram tonight um but yeah hopefully you can stick around and listen to my chat with mel so i'm just gonna see if I can get Mel to join the live. And hopefully we won't have technical issues on here as well. But if you are new to Stash Chats, these are my weekly chats where I talk to different member of the sewing community each week about their sewing stash and sewing journey. So tonight I'm talking to Mel who is an amazing member of the sewing community. She works really hard to bring the joy of sewing to others. And she's worked on refugee sewing projects and teaching people to sew who are living in difficult situations, women from the women's refuge and all sorts of things like that. So I'm really excited to hear more about Mel's sewing journey and how she got into all of that. And yeah, let us know if you are watching and if you've got any questions. Um, I've got a yay found you. Yeah, thank you everyone who's come over from YouTube. Um, I really hope we can get it working over here. Um, oh gosh, it's just said Mel's unable to join. <laughs> oh no pray for us please send your good technology vibes into this chat otherwise we're gonna have to reschedule with mel um because i really want to share her sewing story with you um but yeah i will just get the other chat on in the background just in case she pops back in there but yeah have a think about questions um for mel obviously we've got our usual questions like how did you get into sewing what's your stash like oh here we go here we've got mel hello hi what do i need to do uh i think you're upside down right now hello yeah we've got you right can't really see me though <laughs> what shall i do don't worry we, we're uh we're um yeah we're rolling with the punches here <laughs> today is um not a technology friendly day apparently um, but yeah we're getting a good tour of your new blouse here mel so it's all good how's that yeah perfect perfect i can see close, you i'm just gonna close yeah the yeah we've had to have all the uh the family members of technical support in just to check uh, what the hell's going on and realize no the system's just down today it's not going to work on youtube right. um so yeah really sorry if anyone joined the live on youtube and you've been waiting around um um but yeah thank you for joining and do put your questions and comments in the chat and i'll keep an eye on that and ask mel the questions yeah thank you for joining us mel and thank you for your patience with the uh technical difficulties as well that's okay i was saying earlier on yvette that we're good at sewing we're just not good with technology i know not like literally this never happens i've i've this is why i sw switched from instagram live because they always break and the stream yard and youtube has always been fine today cursed no <laughs> right okay I was thinking today actually a bit how did we actually meet you and I did you how did we meet I don't even know oh I, I know how we met so you know Sarah who's super bales yep. she did a post that she had donated some fabric to a local um charity in Guildford and I live in Woking so I was like oh Guildford that's really local to me let's um find out who this is because then i'll be able to donate some of my mm. stuff as well and yeah so then through that i basically found out about you and then we just met up for a coffee um at the church cafe that time and then we just hit it off from there really yeah but yeah 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 i remember now yeah i was just trying to think how we had that initial connection yeah it was yeah. sarah that i first found out about you through her yeah, and it turns out actually that I knew Sarah because I was involved 
um, acting at Wintershaw and she was in the choir. So, I know, it's like quite a small world actually, isn't it? Is. It is. I think as well with the sewing community where it's so online, you kind of think, oh, I'll never get to meet any of these people. They're all just little people in my phone. And then it's quite exciting to realise that some people are actually local. Um, but we can mm -hmm. talk a bit more um, later about the, the Surrey Sews meetups yep. that we've done since mm -hmm. we first met. Um, before we get into the stash chats, I just want to um, quickly answer Vegan Supper Club's question because um, they said they're new to Stash Hub. Can you tell me a bit more about Stash Hub? Mm -hmm. So Stash Hub is the sewing organiser app that my husband and I have developed. So you can catalogue your fabric, your patterns, your notions, join them all together to create projects and um yeah just get organized and hopefully feel more inspired by your sewing stash mm. um what do you what do you reckon about that description is that fairly accurate mel i think so and something i was thinking about the other day is when you've got everything on stash hub and you can just scroll through i mean it's really exciting because you can just get back in love with your stash and actually you know by shopping from your stash everything in there you like it's like you're browsing a fabric shop but it, all the stuff you already bought so you you know you like it and it's also free because you paid yeah. for it ages ago <laughs> you know that that might be why sometimes it's a bit i feel a bit overwhelmed looking through my stash because it's because everything there is are things that i like i don't know where to it's start <laughs> good options only you can't yeah. choose one yeah yeah right so should we kick off the stash chat officially mel do you want to talk to us about your sewing journey when did you first start sewing and how did you get into it well i was a quilter originally so that was uh, five six years ago so um and looking back now i think how was i so patient with all of those little tiny squares um and i was quite happy doing that until we had the lockdown and Boris with his big speech and then suddenly everyone was making scrubs for the NHS but I never made anything and my friend Rachel said to me oh will you help me with the scrubs and I said well I can't make anything but uh, I could make some scrub bags if you like but uh, she persuaded me to try the scrubs themselves and she taught me how to put a pair of uh, trousers together we did it on FaceTime. Um, so then I set up a hub in this area and I think over six months or so we made about 100 sets of scrubs. Amazing. Yeah. You know, so you never do anything just sort of casually. You're just like, oh, I've learned to make scrubs. Let's get everyone in the community to make 100 I pairs know. of scrubs. I know. And my husband, he was uh, picking up the rolls of fabric and put together a table in the kitchen. Um, my eldest boy started making trousers with me. He could whip up a pair of scrub trousers in about 15 Amazing. minutes. The and then um, my youngest son, John, he was uh, modeling them. <laughs> so when he was whipping up those, um, those scrubs in like 15 minutes, you were like, oh, remind me not to lend you my car. Or you'll get a speeding ticket straight away. <laughs> yeah, no, it was great. It was a great, family effort actually yeah really good yeah that's yeah. really good that all your family are so supportive and you all came together during the lockdown because i felt like it was a really difficult time and everyone's like trapped together and you can't leave your house you can't see anyone else yeah so it's really good that everyone was able to like muck in and work on this big project together yes um, and my husband's um a chef and you know he loves cooking and does um he's got a small business working from home now and he, for years, he'd wanted uh, an island in the middle of the kitchen, but I'd always resisted. But since um, we were cutting out all the scrubs and everything, we had a table in the kitchen. And now we've replaced the table with a permanent work surface, which is my another sewing area. And all the drawers are full of sewing things. <laughs> that was the compromise. You can have your island, but it's the sewing island. <laughs> yeah, they know that when my large pink cutting mat is out on the island they, they can't touch that <laughs> i feel like the kitchen island is like the dream cutting table because it's like a nice height it's not quite it's a bit taller than a table 
usually because your worktops are designed yeah. to stand at, aren't they? And and you can move all the way around it. That's like your ideal situation. That's excellent. Yeah. I'm very very lucky. Brilliant. So when what what was your transition like from scrubs into the garment making and the bag making that you're doing now? Well, I thought, well, if I can make scrubs, then I can make pyjamas. So my sister was having some surgery, so I made her some pyjamas. Um, and then I just sort of got the bug from there, really. I um, was looking at things online. Um, I bought a few kits, which came with all the instructions and the fabrics and the notions and things. Um, yeah, and just went from there. And I was hooked. I actually started off as I say, with pyjamas, and then I went on to making sweatshirts and t-shirts and things. Um, yeah, the rest is history. I think pyjamas is quite a good project to get started as, as a beginner, because it's not too complicated, and also you tend to wear them at home as well, so if they're a bit ropey, you're, it doesn't matter too much, because you're just like, you're not having to walk about town in them. I'm laughing a bit because what you said earlier on was about, um, you know, when I start something, I just get everybody involved. Well, I did make some basic jersey pyjamas first, but then my second pair of pyjamas were the Carolyn pyjamas. <laughs> so you're just not to 100 in absolutely everything. Yes. Like, let's do it. Like, collar, piping. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. 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 I like to challenge myself. And how did those go? Were you pleased with them? Well, I made a twelve first, and I made that from uh, a Laura Ashley bed sheet, so that came up well. Um, and then I made another pair for my twin sister, and the, the plan was that I, I'd make her the blue pair and I'd make a pink pair. But so I made hers, and she was delighted with them. But I haven't got around to making mine. <laughs> That always happens. I feel like sometimes if you, there's too many steps, like that, that's how I felt with my peony dresses. I'd done the two twirls and I'd done mine and I still had to make my mum's one. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I've lost enthusiasm now. Yeah, they were fabulous dresses, Yvette. Really <laughs> oh, thank lovely. you. Right, so we've got a question that says, did you do sewing at school? No, no, I didn't. No, no sewing at all. We did some basic cooking, but no stitching at all which is um, something I liked at the refugee centre uh, I taught a young girl she must have been 10 or 11 how to do her first stitches I just think that's so exciting to sort of be able to teach that when I hadn't had that yeah so you're basically um, like passing on skills that you wish that you'd had um, taught to you as a young kid yes yeah I, I didn't have anything like that at all so no one in your family sews like you didn't have parents that sew or anything like that no um but i've since found out that uh my, my mother when she was living in africa she would make up her own skirts and dresses because there was nowhere to buy them and i, I didn't know that at all and apparently my grandmother used to make um evening dresses wow yeah. how did you find that out then did they start talking when you got into sewing yes. Yeah, my mum said um, that she'd made up a few little bits and pieces, but um, hers were very basic, she said. Um, and she's constantly amazed at things that I make. We were in Marks and Spencer's the other day, and there were some cargo trousers there, and I said, um, I think I'd quite like to make those. And she said, oh, they're far too complicated. <laughs> but anyway, I made some. Amazing. And these the Maison Fauve pattern that you've done? Yes, the Tremplin trousers, the cargo pants. And I'm really proud of them, actually, because they were complicated, but they're very satisfying. And I think I've made three pairs now. Amazing. In fact, these are them, actually, here. Oh, yeah, you can just see them in the background. Give, show us off your, um, your Anthea sleeves as well. This is another new make, isn't it? Um, this one? That you're yeah. wearing now, yeah. yeah. Yeah, with the sleeves. Lovely. Yeah, I, I, I've i had this pattern for a long time, but hadn't um, braved making it, because I thought it was going to be very complicated with the gathers and everything like that. 
actually it's quite simple it com comes together it's like satisfyingly quickly the um the amphia yeah i was really pleased with it and the other thing that pleased me was it took just under a meter of fabric as well amazing that's really good because it's big sleeves yeah. as well yeah. big sleeves but um, because i'm quite um small i seem to um always buy too much fabric and end up with a meter or so over but um with this print i'm delighted i've got so much left because um, i love it <laughs> so have you got a plan to make something else with it are you gonna think about it mm. yeah it's, it's difficult because it's such a, a bold striking print i think i'm going to going to wait maybe till next year and then make another blouse or something yeah yeah see what new patterns come out in the meantime as well yes yeah you see i wouldn't normally choose this coloring for me or this pattern but i'm a sucker for subscription boxes <laughs> and this came from um, beyond the pink door and when i first looked at it i didn't know what i was going to do with it um but there we go i'm really pleased i love those colors on you they work really well <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited by that all right so speaking of buying fabric shall we talk a little bit about your stash okay so how would you describe your fabric stash well I was asking my husband about this and I said uh, I would describe it as the large and he said massive <laughs> well I think it's because uh, I, I've got quite a few different varieties of fabrics um, I don't know and when I find something I like then I seem to get that in various colors um, I don't know I'm quite happy with it uh, and I'm trying to sort of make one before I buy something else. So where do you store all your fabric? Well I've got it in boxes um, at various places in the house. Um, I've got a few boxes here um, and then of course I've got all my quilting things as well which are on top of the wardrobe. So in various places but always in um, transparent boxes so that I can see what's there or I just look through my stash hub. <laughs> Excellent. That is what I like to hear. Mm. So um, how, how do you like to shop? Do you tend to shop more online for fabric or do you like to go in person? Well, during um, lockdown, obviously we couldn't, we couldn't. And that's where I um, bought quite a lot of fabric, which I've never used which is why my stash is quite large, I think, because there's a lot of fabrics there that are just not suitable for the project I had in mind. Um, I've got an example here, actually. I absolutely love this fabric, um, but it's a very, very drapey knit fabric. Um, it's very loose and drapey. And I just don't know what I'd do with it, but I just love the colours in it. Lovely um, print. Yeah, and I've got all sorts of weird things upstairs, sort of stretchy, sparkly things and you know. I feel yeah. like the crazy designs are easier to buy online, aren't they? Because you just they just catch your eye. Yeah. Yeah. Um on um in person shopping, where do I go? We had a lovely afternoon at Lamarzi, didn't we? Yeah, that was really nice. It was too hard to choose, though. I feel like I was there for ages with <laughs> like, 10 bolts of fabric. Like, yeah. which one shall I do? Uh, yeah, I was very good at helping other people choose, I think. Yeah, I feel like you're quite a good saleswoman, Mel. This is why everyone wants you on their stands at the shows. Well, I really enjoy it, actually, when people come onto the stand, just have, striking up a conversation with them. Um, and maybe I'm quite, quite nosy. I like to see what they bought and what they're planning to make. Yeah. It's really fun, fun to like share that inspiration, isn't it? That like joy of making with somebody yeah. else. Yeah. And the thing I liked as well is, is sort of standing there chatting to people. And then you can see other people coming up and spotting their makes and recognising the patterns and having a chat about what I'm wearing, what they're wearing. And really helping them to find what they would like to make or they would like to buy yeah about this. It's, have you thought about that yeah. i think it's really easy to like 
sell stuff at these shows when the products are so good as well like mm -hmm, when i yeah. was um on system in Taka, it's just like you know let me show you this fabric it's really nice and yeah. everyone's like oh yeah i want some of that it's just like um you know it, it doesn't even feel like selling it's just like talking chatting. to people about stuff that everyone likes chatting just chatting it's really good Neither, have you spotted the picture at the back oh, oh yes <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> So that's Yvette in the middle and me on one side and then Emma from um, Studio 77. That, she was the uh, person I was helping at the Stitch Festival. Amazing. And, uh, um, Yvette made a little bag, didn't you? Yeah, that was the the, um, the workshop that Emma did last um, year at the Ali yeah. Pali show. I went mm -hmm. to her workshop um, because, yeah, since meeting Emma, I was like, I haven't done any bag making projects. And Emma's whole business is like bag making supplies and patterns. So I was like, I should probably give it a go. I'll do her workshop to get into it. Um, and I did the workshop and I haven't made any bags since then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is it something that's just not for you? Or? No, it's not even that. I just feel like it's something that's like a, a, a different, it's different yeah. from garment making. Yeah. And when I left my full-time job to do uh, like work on Stash Hub, I thought, oh, I'll get loads more time for sewing. <laughs> and I didn't. <laughs> I've got less time for sewing now. Yeah. Um, but I just, I feel like I need that like, you know, mental capacity to like tackle it as a new um, sort of avenue. Yeah. Um, same, with, same with like lingerie making. I've got like a <gasps> bra pattern and all the supplies, but I just haven't done it yet. Yes, yeah, yeah, me too. But I've um, made a couple of bags since uh, the Stitch Festival and I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. How did you find it compared to garment making? Was it similar or not that different? Um, a lot of tugging on the machine to sort of feed things through. And I mean, this is one of the little bags I made. Can you see that? Mm. It needs to come the other way a bit. This way? There we go. Yeah, there we go. Just about see it. Yeah. So the proportions are, are small. It's a bit, it's probably similar to the difference between making clothes for women and clothes for children and babies. It's very very little little bits and pieces. Um, and there's so many specialist fabrics as well, and all sorts of interlining and stabilizers. But it's just something a bit different, which I've yeah. enjoyed. Yeah. Do you does it feel like a bit more of like a slower project? than some garment making because of all the little details um yes it, yeah yeah i think so yes, like something you yeah. can take your time over a bit more and like get stuck into yeah and there's a lot more detail and the top stitching and things like that so it's just another challenge but i was thinking about it today my heart really is in dressmaking though yeah oh, that's good uh, right let's do a couple of questions from the chat so how much time do you spend sewing Ooh. well it depends if you mean actually sewing or planning sewing. yeah i spend a lot of time planning sewing it depends my husband was away at the weekend so i i did this blouse in sort of um four or five hours i would say a couple of hours a day because i'm an early writer so I tend to get some cutting out um, yeah a couple of hours a day I don't know how that compares with other people this is what Asma said uh, last week she was said like because I was like how do you get time to sew like cause she's got young kids mm. she's the surgeon and she was like oh I just get up really early I was like I can't fathom this I'm not a morning person at all <laughs> oh um, really oh no but um, yeah, clearly it, get, it gets you that extra time in the day when no one's bothering you that you can get on yeah. with stuff. Yeah, and then when I'm cutting out or, or doing something, I need to focus completely. So it's great that the house is yeah. quiet. Excellent. Especially like that is the most frustrating thing when you're cutting out and then you realise you've like cut out a piece wrong and you're like, <sighs> well, I have the fabric to cut this again. Mm -hmm. I was making a silk blouse for our birthday. I'm a twin, so that obviously our. Um, and I I cut out the front um, the, the wrong way round. And oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Luckily, um, the fabric was the same both sides, so I managed to squeeze together 
another front but um yeah you do need to really focus yeah. on well, I feel like cut, the cutting is like one of the only steps that's not reversible. Like most stuff you can just like unpick and like give it another go if it goes badly wrong. But the cutting, once it's cut, you can't get it back together. <laughs> I asked Asma the question last week, uh, what was her favourite sewing tool apart from the unpicker? Well, I think um, the unpicker is certainly something that I use with the very free planning. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's an essential i feel like you can't hate on the unpicker you need the unpicker <laughs> it's there for you yeah um so jill so much more fun says um do you have a favorite type of fabric to sew with hmm. i suppose the e easiest one to sew with is a straightforward cotton cotton or a poplin um I love the Liberty fabrics. Um, do I have a favourite? I quite like cord as well. Um, not sure about favourite fabric, but I do love a leopard print. Nice. Hmm. Yeah, each fabric has its own challenges, really. I feel like you don't have to do pattern matching with a leopard print because it's like yeah. little random spots. Mm. It's not too... Uh too much pressure on that front yeah that's what i liked about this as well it's um lots of pattern going on so you don't need to to worry about it yeah um shall we talk a bit about the like the sort of sewing projects that you've been involved in right so like the the guildford refugee aid uh sewing of refugees project like how did you get into that um well we were volunteering there um in fact we volunteer at the lighthouse in woking and there was a summer break and we really enjoyed volunteering and so we thought well what can we do in the summer so they were advertising at the guildford refugee center for people to come and run kids camps and things so we went along there um that was for about four weeks and somebody there said oh we, we want to start sewing because there's lots of women here who can sew and and just need someone to to help them get started do you know anyone who can sew <laughs> i said well i can actually and so that was how it all started i went along um with a couple of machines and um there was a big group of women um yes and it started from there so we started with as i said just a couple of machines and then when it finished probably just before christmas we had about 15 women each week coming i had three helpers and we had um eight or nine machines um and a busy busy class it was lovely yeah it was really popular wasn't it it was amazing yeah. and yvette came along you came along and helped a few times yeah i came a couple of times it was really good to see everyone like enjoying themselves i, I can't imagine like the ladies there what their lives must have been like so to have mm. those like few hours where they can just create something yeah, yeah. um just to see the like the joy that it brought to them was just incredible it was and when they, they'd made something they wanted us to take pictures didn't they and they held it up and everything because most of them couldn't speak english so it was all just looking at things uh, and they didn't use proper tape measures they just measured with their hands and measured the fabrics sort of like this to there um and they, they had incredible skills as well. So talented. Whereas for me, if I was making something, I'd spend ages cutting it and getting the size right. They would, I'd give them some fabric and by the end of the session, they'd made something which they were happy with, they, they could wear or their children could wear. It was just amazing. I learned so much from them. Mm. Yeah, it's just so, so inspiring to like see their different approaches. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, just like um, you and I, we like to go into a fabric shop and see nice things and be able to choose from fabrics. I would um, take along a selection of fabrics or just my Stash Hub app and let them choose. Um, and people were very generous with donations of fabrics and machines and things. And so I would take all those donations in and wash them and present them nicely so that it was like we would see when we went into a shop so that it just looked new to them and i got a lot of pleasure from that it was good yeah that was amazing so what's the project you're working on now so you're working more with beginners now 
with beginners um, in English as well, so it's quite different. So the refugee project closed suddenly just before Christmas. We turned up for the last session and um, people have gone. They've been moved to different centres. Yeah, that was really um, sad. Yeah, it was sad because we built relationships with these people and, and all of that. But um, one door closes, another opens. So we uh, volunteer at the lighthouse in Woking anyway. Uh, we do the community lunch on a Wednesday. Um, and they have a, a branch in Barnsbury, which is um, for women who um, are going through a difficult patch in their lives. Um, and yes, yeah, so I've started up there. We've got six women, um, all beginners. Um, some of them have used a machine a long, long time ago, but basically we're teaching them. So Eleanor and I go along each week and we've got the machines there. Um, so they've made, the first thing they made was some bunting. Um, one lady started on some pyjamas and tote bags and we're going to be making these little pots now. Oh, amazing. Store. That's our project for next week. So Yes, but again, it's really rewarding um one lady said to me that it's the first time ever that she could remember just not thinking about her problems oh, because that's uh, amazing yeah, uh, yes it was amazing it, it was really humbling actually because when you're sewing you can't think about anything else and she'd switched off yes so she'd be back every week so it's lovely that's amazing that you've that you've taken like your passion and now you're spreading the joy to other people <laughs> yeah it is it is lovely yeah that's amazing um so would you have any advice if there's anyone who would like to get into volunteering projects um yeah i mean i'm happy to have a chat with anyone who's, who's doing that in fact a lady came last week and we had a chat but uh follow your heart and don't have any preconceived ideas about how it's going to be because when I went to the refugee centre I thought right well we'll do this and then the next week we'll make this um, but it just wasn't like that that's not what they wanted they wanted machines they wanted fabrics um, threads and time and it just evolved like that so just be open-minded as to what the need is follow your heart smile and oh, time. amazing um, right, shall we see a bit of your fabric stash? Oh, what have you got? Have you got some okay. stuff to show us? Um, well, I didn't. I haven't got much to show you, but um, so I've shown you my um, mistake. Now I'll show you this. It's I love it. Um, I'm going to stand up and show it to you, but I don't know what to make of it. Oh, I've got, I think, a very similar fabric to this that I've used to make, make a valley dress. Ooh. Do you want to see it? I do. I, so I'll get it. You can talk about that and I'll get my dress. Right. Well, I, I do go through stages with fabrics and things. And this was my African wax stage. Um, and I just fell in love with it. I love the red. I love the yellow and um, African wax is a complete joy to sew with because it, it's just very easy to handle it's it's not waxy at all it's soft and um, very stable isn't it it's it nice is, yeah. yeah look obviously i got the blue colorway Ooh. but i did Ooh. the valley dress Ooh. so i did a plain blue here this is like a, a waist tie that i made because i wasn't sure about the the boxiness on me right. and then i did the sleeves and then I because it's quite a big panel mm. I got a big area of the whole print there in the middle okay. and then sort of similar on the back but the front yoke you kept as a plain yeah color, or did you pick out a bit right yeah so the, well, that, and then the top of the gathers is plain and then I've just got the big motif 
on you know the whole most of it i would say the pockets are a bit pathetic on the valley dress it does have pockets but they're quite small um they're like top stitched down i don't know if you've made right. the valley dress but like yeah. that's that's my hand in there and they're full now <laughs> so you can't really use them but um yeah they're there oh, that's a good idea but and i'm so glad that we live close by because i know who i'll be inviting around before i cut it out <laughs> yeah well i do i need to wear this dress more i feel like it's very summery so i don't wear it like a lot but when mm. I do wear it, I'm like, this is amazing. I should wear this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> really lovely. And those colours are, are great. I, I'm in a really turquoise like phase at the moment. I, I get into phases. And so I keep like buying fabric with bits of turquoise in. So I, I need to go back to my things I've already got that are also turquoise. Because that's what I'm uh, drawn to at the moment. Um, mm. But yeah, my wardrobe is very blue. That sort of, uh, I can never get away from the blue. <laughs> Yeah, mine's, um, as I'm getting older, I'm just wearing brighter colours, I think. Become more, more confident and just decide that I'm going to wear what, what I fancy. Yeah, that's really good. Which brings me on to this other piece of fabric, which I've had for a long, long time. But I'm just going to contradict myself now that I've not been brave enough to make into anything. Oh, so it's like a, a pink and red. Lovely. Yes. And I've got a little stick on it saying, uh, well, you can tell how long I've had it because I bought three meters for £25. Pounds. Uh, again. <laughs> so that must have been a few years ago. Yeah, that was in 21. Yeah. So it's, I suppose it could be anything really, couldn't it? I could make it up and do anything. But Yeah, I mean, three meters is a really good length for like a dress. So yeah. you've got yes. that as an option. Yeah, I tend to buy three meters when I do buy from, from a store. Um, but as I said earlier, I always end up with about a meter left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depends what you make, doesn't it? But um, yeah, I, I think often fabric, like the patterns will su suggest you need more fabric than you actually do, because you mm. can like Tetris them in a bit closer. And then you can also like, um, you know, sometimes that is like, you know, for sizes this to this, you'll need three meters. But then yeah. if you're actually in a smaller size range, you don't need that much. With this Narita Hansen um, print, because I love it, I was trying to um, do that with it and not follow their layout, follow mine. And I, the way I folded the fabric when I held the back up, uh oh, I had a bit slashed off the bottom <laughs> so that's why it's a little bit shorter than planned but <laughs> i think the anthea blouse is quite quite long anyway isn't it it's sort mm. of designed to be long but everything's long on me because i'm really short in the torso so <laughs> <laughs> oh and the latest fabric that i have i can see a theme going on here with pinks this is my latest oh that's lovely that's nice like bold contrast yeah yeah and i did buy half a meter in another color oh, no. nice. I'm going to make lampshades from. oh that's cool. cool yeah but this is a fabric by um fiona from so girl um, her husband printed it and she designed it um but i haven't thought about the project yet because what's putting me off is the pattern matching mm. <laughs> but i love the fabric i'm sure i'm going to find something to make so watch this space yeah you know what's a great pattern for not having to do pattern matching i was, I was thinking about this earlier is the roscoe blouse so that's what i'm wearing now so because mm. you do the it's got like this bit but you do it with a facing so there isn't a seam up the middle okay. so the whole front is just one thing and then it's raglan sleeves ah. so that's quite a good one for not having to do pattern matching can you make that into is there a dress version there, as well there is a dress version i think it's quite a dropped like dropped waist right. the dress version but you can change that quite easily that's one of the good things about doing um your own patterns mm. isn't it you can yeah make them however you like remind me of that event because i'll probably forget 
Yes, definitely. That's what I'm thinking of making with my new, uh, what Vicky made, fabric. They are gorgeous, her fabrics. Absolutely amazing, aren't they? I'll, I'll show you mine. So I ordered the art. <gasps> those colors that is gorgeous do we think exactly so, yeah there's even a um a secret ginger on there mm. you see a little bit of fringe here in the eye oh gosh <laughs> that, that's amazing because I, I saw her other fabrics at the stitch festival but i didn't see that one that's lovely yeah i think if they had um like a jacket that she's made in this that was really mm. nice um but yeah did you did you buy anything when you were at the Stitch Festival? Um, a little piece of liberty might have snuck into my bag. <laughs> yes, that's that's all I, I purchased actually. And a couple of uh, bag making fabrics, but, but um, I was so busy on the stand that I didn't really have a chance to look around. Well, I, mean, I did have a chance to look around, but not to buy anything because I was just on a coffee break or I'm just nipping to the loo. Um, but we were really, really busy. So it helped my purse actually. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of a good thing in a way. Um, have you ever made your own pattern? Done a bit of self drafting. I did actually. I, well, not really very complicated. I made a made up a, a polo neck pattern, which, which which came out okay because I liked different parts of different um, designs. Really, I do like to follow instructions if the pattern says do this then i then i do it um but yeah Some, I, I like that one. sometimes sometimes that can be a really good way to like learn new techniques mm. so like mm. if you read it and you're like oh it's a bit weird like i don't think i would do it like that but then if you do it anyway as what the instructions say you might be like oh actually that's a much easier or cleverer way to yeah. do that method or yeah, like yeah. finish that scene than what i might have done before um so yeah i do like to look at, at the instructions especially on indie patterns yeah, like yeah. i think you pay for more than just the like drafting of the pattern like you get really good instructions and tips and stuff as well yeah yeah and i love a video if anything's got a video then um i'm more of a visual learner so i do like to, to look at those yeah things. Yeah, it definitely helps because I, I feel like there's only so much you can do in a diagram. Like if it's something like the burrito method or something where you've got to like manipulate the fabric, that can be quite hard to show in a diagram. Yeah, yeah. I did struggle with something just recently. Um, the uh, uh, wide leg pants, Peppermint Magazine, and uh, a couple of people came to my aid with that and sent me pictures and directed me to a video, um, what's her name? Um, so Let's Sparkle, Sam, yeah. is it Sam? Yeah, she helped me, she sent me some photos and uh, got me started with that, so that's good. Mm. Yeah, I think yeah. sometimes seeing a pit, like, picture or even if you're in person and you can see something made up, you mm. can kind of try and figure out how they got there. Mm. Mm. It's part of the challenge and fun, isn't it, of, of sewing. I still consider myself not a beginner as such but still very very much learning um yeah still a beginner well not a beginner but an intermediate i've still got so much to learn yeah. so yeah. many different techniques what is there anything that you like haven't done yet that you really want to like have give a go soon well similar to you Yvette, i've got um some lingerie material i've never made for bra but actually I do have a pattern and fabric for a bra which I bought as a kit um, so I'd like to have a go at that yeah but uh, uh, I think it's very complicated because it's all very small bits isn't it mm -hmm. yeah it's, I guess it's just a sort of different different approach again mm -hmm. like more delicate mm -hmm. fabrics and smaller pieces yeah. um, but yeah i am interested to try it and i feel like once i get into it then i can get like fully into like loratu's store get all the like really fun laces and stuff but i just i don't want to allow myself to buy loads of the stuff before i actually start doing it yeah that's the thing isn't it it's, it's an investment in different fabrics different patterns all that kind of thing 
Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I I wear most of the most things I wear are things that I've made, but um, knickers and bras still from Marks and Spencer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm that person who's just got like one bra that's always com that's the only one that's comfortable. So just waiting for that one to come back out the wash. <laughs> Mm. um so do you ever buy shop made clothes now that you're sewing i don't, don't actually no I, I, everything i wear i've made and if i haven't um got it then i'll make it <laughs> so it's quite quite nice actually i see that i think that i'm sort of saving money by not going clothes shopping i think as well you can justify spending more on fabric that way this is sewist math i'm thinking about sewist math a lot recently because you know with the whole girl math thing but there's mm. definitely a whole set of sewist math logic so like if you buy fabric that's your clothing budget and your entertainment budget yeah. so you can yes. spend twice as much yes <laughs> absolutely it's a hobby um other people in the family benefit you know i i get given lots of items to mend or change um, yeah so it's a benefit to everybody how do you feel about being given like mending projects or alterations I quite like it actually um, I know I'm gonna get inundated now actually. <laughs> <laughs> you're wrong Mel you can't like it <laughs> because if something's not gonna be wearable then I think oh, I'll just have a go um, it can't be worse than not being able to wear it because it, it needs needs mending in fact Ellen and I are going to a prom event run at the lighthouse on Friday so they've got loads of dresses and people have got appointments it, it's uh, as a sort of treat for families who struggle to pay for prom dresses so we're going to be there on Friday um, altering dresses so that they fit perfectly amazing <laughs> So that that should be fun. Yeah. Brilliant. Would you say that your style has changed a lot since learning to sew? I've become more adventurous. I was, yeah, I didn't really know what, what suited me. And now I see patterns on other people and I think, oh, I'm going to try that. In fact, at the Stitch Festival last year, a lady was wearing an, an amazing blouse. It'd be funny if she's watching. It's the Thea Boho blouse from Liberty um, and it's got big sleeves and everything and um, I would never have thought about me wearing that but it looks so lovely on her. Um, in fact I took a picture of her so that I could go and find the pattern and I've made one and I love it. So I think sewing has unleashed, um, I don't know, a desire to, to just feel good about clothes that I'm wearing. That's awesome. I think it can make you more expressive as well, can't it? Because like the actual making is a sort of act of creativity. Mm. And so then to have that translate in what you're wearing as well, really brings a lot more personality through in your outfits. Yeah. And I love um, little labels as well. I'm a sucker for little labels. So um, yeah, I've got a little tin of various different labels and I spend quite a while choosing which one's going to go with which. And buttons as well yeah i love, love getting like a really perfect color match it's so satisfying when you're planning yeah. your project it is yeah 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 i found these buttons actually ethel and joan and they were light pink dark, dark pink and white perfect. which amazing. just just worked well yeah. so um maria says do you have a favorite type of fabric to sew with so you're going to stick on cotton or are you going to throw something else into the ring? Well, cotton because it's easy. Um, the poplin because it just feels luxurious. Um, as I say, I made a silk blouse recently and I just loved, I loved wearing it. It was quite challenging and I think I remember at the time saying I'm never going to sew with silk again <laughs> because it weighs quite, quite a lot. Um, so no, not really. I just, I'm happy to try anything. Yeah. I think that shows as well in like how adventurous you are in the projects that you make and the things that you take on as well, like with all the 
projects that you're working on that you're just really open to trying things i think it's amazing i'm laughing now because my son peter came home this evening and said uh one of his he, someone's house he'd just been to she said would i be able to make her an outdoor tablecloth but it's got to have a hole in the middle for the umbrella and she'd like pockets on each corner so that she can put weights in and uh i said no no peter i don't think so he said why not you've made so much so many more complicated things than that so um i think i'm going to be very very adventurous if i take that <laughs> i mean it might just be a case of you said no because that doesn't sound like an inspiring project rather than that you couldn't do it I think I'd need help to work out the measurements and things, but I'm going to think on that one anyway. Yeah, <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to do it just because someone else, you can just be like, oh, that's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> so have you made your sons and your husband any clothes? Well, I did in lockdown, uh, yeah, sweatshirts and um, track, track bottoms. Uh, I've made my husband some shorts actually. And he could, couldn't find any chef's trousers to wear. So I made him a pair of those, which were too big. So then I made another pair. In fact, you made some for Doug, didn't you? Yeah, which was the Elling trousers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's very pleased with those. So yeah, just small bits and pieces. Um, laptop cases, things like that. Yeah. Amazing. Not, not so many things. I mean, men's shirts are quite complicated. Yeah. Aren't they? This, so I was talking to Tony about this a couple of weeks ago because he was saying about how it, it feels like there's quite a lot of women in the sewing space yeah. and he's doing some different projects to try and encourage more men into the space, which is amazing. And I was saying, do you think it's because it feels less accessible to men? Because when you think of men's clothing, yeah. the first thing is like yeah. a button up shirt and that's quite advanced in terms of sewing skills. So it just feels less accessible mm. as a hobby. Yeah, yes. In fact, he's brought out a new pattern, hasn't he? Which looks quite simple. So um, I might give that a go. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've done a few things for Doug, but I need to make sure that he like really, really wants it. Otherwise, he's not appropriately grateful and I feel like I've wasted my time. <laughs> I know. That's the thing, isn't it? I mean, that jacket you made him, uh, what was it? The... Oh, that's the Ilford. The Ilford jacket, yes. I did make one of those in fact someone was asking me in fact you asked me earlier what was my um, biggest disaster in sewing and it was the Ilford jacket because I made it fairly new into my sewing journey and I just didn't do the measurements right and I've got two sons it didn't fit them it didn't fit my husband and it's far too big for me so it's sitting in my wardrobe beautifully finished with Liberty Bias oh. binding the um, pain but, yeah yeah in fact what i need to do is to take it out and alter it so it fits me but it will need a lot, a lot of it yeah <laughs> cut half of it out mm. Mm. okay so what garment have you made that you are most proud of hmm. most proud in fact my sister's Cowlin pajamas actually because they were in a beautiful Lady McElroy fabric. Everything seemed to go right. Um, she was really delighted with Amazing. Them. So I would say that, and there's, as you know, there's lots of detail, lots of piping. Um, yeah, so it's the Cowlin pajamas. Amazing. Um, so the cat's whiskers says, How long have you been sewing? Well, I've been sewing since 2016 but that was quilting but dressmaking i was trying to think today was it in 21 the lockdown started 2020, 2020 was the first one so since then yeah so, so when when you were quilting was it like full quilts that you were making uh yes uh yeah i started small um just squares um and then i enjoyed the precision of the, the points all matching and things like that yeah so i did make quite a few quilts even the dog amazing. had a quilt amazing i can yeah. imagine you've actually finished them all as well like you did the top and the binding and yeah. the actual quilting 
Yeah, when my son went to university, I, I made him a quilt to put on his bed because I felt then that, not that I was watching over him, but that he was taking a bit of me Aww. with him. Oh, that's really so sweet. That was nice for his bed. Um, yeah, so I enjoyed making lots of different quilts, but no more. No more. You're you're past the quilts now. You've I'm got absolute dress making. I'm dreading if anyone at the new group asks me about quilt, um, about patchwork. <laughs> but, oh yeah, this is something that you could work on in your own time. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's 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 make a few few garments first. <laughs> yeah, get them hooked on that instead. Um, mm. Right, uh, keep your questions coming in in the chat because we're probably going to wrap this up soon. So if you've got any questions for Mel, get them in the chat now. Right, uh, got... I can see you there. Yeah, we've got... Would you be a sewing bee? No, because I'm not good enough and I'm not quick enough. Um, that would be fun though, wouldn't it? It would be excellent fun. And you'd yeah. have like a whole new set of sewing friends. It would be amazing. I quite like the ones I've got, but I was just thinking, that wouldn't it be lovely to do like a sewing bee with, we had that lovely social, um, probably about a month ago now, was it, for our Surrey Sews, and it was so lovely to be in a room with people head down um, making things. Although I'm not sure you got much of a chance to do much sewing there, did you, Mel? I was just thinking that, as I said that, I, I spent my time going around being really nosy, looking at what everyone else is making um, and serving tea and cake but it, it was still fun the cake was top tier though excellent cake yeah um thank you yes yeah, so we've done a few sorry so's meetups with different types of things haven't we we have and we've got um, a very exciting event coming up in the autumn um can't say when exactly but if you um, follow Surrey Sews or follow Yvette or myself then we'll release the details soon but what I can tell you is that it's going to be in Woking and it's going to involve fizz, cream tea um, and a catwalk. Oh lovely I've just seen Tanya saying have you got any more Surrey Sews plans coming up so she's definitely um, definitely nudging you for that teaser there um, yeah. So yeah, definitely follow um, Mel Keen, or if you follow me at Blossom Sandwich as well, I'll definitely share what's coming up. Um, yeah. So that's really exciting. Yeah, so that's a big event um, later on in the year. But between then and now, I'm sure we'll, we'll sort out other things. We've got Ali Pally, haven't we? Yeah. So that will be yeah. in October. And in um, the I'm not booked on a stand yeah. just yet. Yeah, so any businesses that want Mel on their stand, you've got to get in quick before she gets snapped up. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoy it. I really do enjoy it. I'll be going anyway, so. Um, oh, we've got Threads Festival in Farnham. Yeah, we're going that, to have a that's in June, I believe. In June, yes. And didn't we talk about going to Church's Museum to see a, an exhibition that was happening yeah. there? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think... B knows about that so we'll have to get on to B and figure out when we're going to do that plan yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah there's also the Brick Lane Stitchery which is happening oh, yeah. in May yeah. so yeah loads going on if you want to do something around Surrey or London just uh, yeah. drop us a message because there's uh, yeah. we do we do meet ups um, been to Goldhawk Road as well which was really fun um, that one. yeah you'll have to come with us next time Mel yeah, I think we should do another sewing afternoon as well, though, Yvette. Because... Yeah, we should. We all, uh, we'll message after this to choose some dates because I need to, mm. if we're going to do the same haul, I need to see when it's available. Mm. Yeah, then that was really good and everyone seemed to enjoy it. And yeah, it was good. Yeah. Yeah, it was really fun. I, I felt like the, when we got there, the haul seemed so big. And I was like, why have I booked this humongous hall? Like, it's going to be such a joke with like a few people mm. in it. Mm. And then when everyone arrived, it was so many people mm -hmm. and it was so busy and everyone's working. Yeah. Um, and I had to yeah. go home and get another ironing board. <laughs> and it was really good. I ran out of cake. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's excellent. I feel like you could, you could probably bring any amount of cake and you'd run out of cake because it's yeah. so good. <laughs> It was lovely to see um, what people were working on as well. Really, sort of a wide range of, 
of, of things and it really motivated me actually to get to get home and start sewing yeah love, lovely boost to the sojo i feel like there's mm. nothing like a bit of like company to sort of help you um because you've done some of the virtual sewing socials as well haven't you mel yes now that's really good in fact i think there's one this weekend or early next week but that's really great because you can just go online um and you can have your camera on or off um so they're scheduled sessions so if you search up virtual sewing room and i've just had some brilliant conversations with people all over the country in fact um met a few of them at the stitch festival but it's just you know we've all got the same thing in common um sitting chatting sewing it's all very casual and it's lovely lovely really recommend it because sometimes sewing can feel quite isolating sort of in your room on your own um hmm. yeah and you don't have to be sewing you can be cutting out a project or just having a cup of tea and enjoying whatever. enjoying some sewing company yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah there's i think there's one on sunday so i'm hope i'm hopefully going to join it on sunday oh good. but we'll see i don't know I've, i'm really bad at joining them <laughs> i will for the, for the whole session you can just dip in and out if you want to yeah i should just put it in my calendar otherwise i'll forget about it yeah but yeah i would like to go to one i think it'll be really fun yeah it is good um they've had these little labels made that you can purchase now which say um made during virtual sewing time excellent so that's good um and also for this uh big event we're having um in the autumn we're going to do a sew along with the virtual sewing room so i'm going to host a couple of sessions where we make something that you can wear to Ooh, whatever we're planning amazing that's a great idea so everyone can get a little sneak peek yes 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 i, well, I think that's a good as well because then you can know who's who and what they're going to be wearing because i feel like sometimes you know people from their outfits yes yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it's not going to be a really fancy nancy thing though it's going to be sort of quite casual and accessible to everybody amazing i'm excited to hear more about that mm. Mm, yeah very mysterious <laughs> right is there anything else that you want to say um before we wrap up this chat mel um i'm just looking around to see if there's anything that i was going to mention that i haven't no it's been lovely to chat to you about it's, it's um it's strange seeing you other side of the camera i'm used to seeing you in person <laughs> no. <laughs> um but yeah thank you so much for your patience as well um mel and everyone that's watched with the whole technical issues thing um but i will download this if i can and put it on youtube so okay. if you missed the start or anything um you'll be able to watch it on catch up um but yeah thank you for joining us mel it's been really great to have you on stash chats i really enjoyed it really enjoyed it um yeah it's been great and it's so nice to see so many people joining and loved all the questions and if you want to contact me about setting up your own group um, I'm happy to have a chat with you or even come along um, I can help you find resources and things um, and if you've got any other questions just get in touch amazing um yeah well i'll put your like contact details in the description when it's on youtube so people can find you on instagram um but yeah amazing okay. all right see you soon everyone there's no stash chats next week by the way um so it'll be a good opportunity to catch up on any that you've missed um because this is episode 31 so someone's probably really? missed a few along the way <laughs> yeah amazing yeah um so yeah week off for me next week um but yeah thank you for joining and i've got a really exciting guest in a couple of weeks time Ooh. bye okay bye